Hello everyone, we are here today with Philip, Hello. a weapons collector who owns the PTRS. Now, this is not to confuse with the PTRD. Ian from ForgottenWeapons.com already looked at the PTRD. Now the PTRS is a more complex variant, it's a semi-automatic, whereas the PTRD is a one-shot. Here you can see the five-shot clip, by the way. Now both of them were introduced in 1941 and basically the same function as an anti-tank rifle. Of course, this one is, since it fires five, can fire five shots in a row, a bit more complex. And it was also produced in less numbers. Now, Glantz noted till December 1942, about 202,000 PTRD were produced and about 63,000 PTRS. Now, as mentioned, they served in the same function and usually in the table of equipments for the Soviet divisions I have, they just note anti-tank rifle. They don't specify if it's PTRD or PTRS. And besides from the early 1941 divisions, the numbers range from about 80 to 290 guns, more or less, for rifle divisions and guards divisions till the end of the war. So there's always a bit of fluctuation, but to the general idea between 80 to 290 guns. Now, we will provide more information later, but for now, Philip will take a closer look at the gun and, well, comment on it. Short reminder, on my main channel I have a video on Soviet anti-tank rifle tactics. Be sure to check it out after this video. Uh, hello everybody, I'm not Ian, I'm Phil, but I still will show you a little bit about this weapon. Um, this is our PT PTRS-41, a semi-automatic anti-tank rifle. Here we have a nice comparison, that's a Garand clip. And this is a full PTRS clip. Five block and not eight, but uh, I think you get more out of it. Um, the weapon is actually a gas, gas system or a gas uh, uh, actuated weapon. It's like an SKS just in big, or let's say the SKS is a PTRS in small. But more about this later. We have simple iron sights uh, with a gradient to 1,500 meters. Uh, we have a big charging handle where you little bit need a little bit of force. Uh, we have like a Garand uh, loading device where you can insert the clip. Mostly you load it from the bottom. It's easier because and uh, you have a miss massive bolt. It's about two to three kilos and a very sturdy frame. But more about this later. Uh, we have a safety here. This is on fire. We can fold it completely back into this position. I'm not going to do it because there's a pin a little bit protruding. I cannot get it back properly. Um, normally, this bar will block the trigger that you can't press it and you cannot reach into it. Here is the little lever uh, for opening the bottom. Uh, I need a hammer for that, but um, it's typical Russian. Uh, I will show it also later. On uh, the front, on the top, we have the gas, uh, yeah, uh, the gas system. It's, it's plugged here, held in place. You can adjust it to three position if you have dirty ammo or harsh conditions. But you need to push this forward and pull it out and then you can rotate the gas system. A very, very heavy barrel, a very sturdy bipod and iron sights and a big big muscle break, which produces a nice flash. Uh, one funny thing, one nice feature about this gun and the design is it's actually really also meant for two-man operation. You can carry it in the middle or you can remove it. The handle and you can attach it at the front. So one man can carry it, carry it in the front, the other guy can carry it in the back and you can move really fast over the battlefield. The, the carry handle falls to the side that you still can shoot and in total it's about 20 kilos so technically one person can carry it, practically probably not. There's one nice feature, it's a two-piece weapon actually, you can hear, you see that big block, that big 
transfer block that holds the barrel to the receiver. And we're going to show now the detail a bit inside the gun. We're going to detach that thing and come back to you later. Okay, we have the weapon now in the two, two pieces, the, let's say, travel position or the travel uh, situation, uh, how you will travel with the gun. Uh, we have here this, this rod you see that is actually this long. That's for the gas system. This one pushes, it's a short stroke system that pushes onto the, the receiver here and on the, on the bolt here and then recycles the gun. Um, I'm not gonna disassemble the gas system. It's actually just a very simple gas system. Uh, nothing fancy here. It's also very crude, Russian made. Um, the interesting part is now inside here. This is the Simonov receiver. Uh, the one who have an SKS probably will know the system by heart. It's, it's very typical, it's actually the same. You pull that lever here, upward position, then you can, you have to, it's a threaded something, it's a threaded latch. You can, you have to hold it down because it's a very strong spring inside this. You can pull it out. And now comes the funny part. It still has Cosmo line in it and a very, very strong spring. Um, just a typical two piece. It's a two piece as a middle metal uh, piece inside, a two piece spring. And then you can remove the bolt and you have to. It's everything is a little bit bigger. And you have actually a two-piece bolt like an SKS. Um, funny note, it's quite, quite heavy. Uh, funny side note is you have a spring, uh, spring as a spring tension on the firing pin. So I guess would say when you slam forward that you don't detonate the cartridge and uh, it's a safety feature. The rest is just a normal, a normal trigger. Uh, where we here, here have a catch. Uh, you cannot fire it in the dry position, you need the bolt inside to fire it, but it's a very crude, simple system that pretty much works. I got some additional goodies about the PTRS, namely I got a report about the initial employments of the PTRS-41 from September 1941. Peter from Tank Archives translated a rather interesting document that outlines that the PTRS was treated more or less as a secret weapon at that point. Yet also that some commanders did a rather poor job. The document is from the Military Council of the 30th Army. It notes, Inspections of anti-tank rifle platoons and meetings with platoon commanders revealed the following. Anti-tank rifle companies arrived at the Army headquarters on August 17th and were sent to divisions on that same day. Company commanders upon arriving at divisional headquarters reported to division commanders regarding the purpose of these rifles and their tactical characteristics. Commanders of the 251st, 242nd and 162nd infantry divisions treated the rifles as formality. There were no orders to the divisions or inventory entries, even though they were warned about the great secrecy and value as anti-tank weapon of the new rifles. Regimental commanders treated the rifles the same way as the divisional commanders and used them recklessly. As if this was not bad enough, the report continues. Anti-tank rifle personnel were frequently thrown into offensives ordered to fire upon pillboxes and machine guns from their rifles. As a result, 450 rounds were used up fruitlessly, about 40 men were lost and two rifles had still not been found. It is possible that they have fallen into the hands of the enemy. It continues, Commanders, instructors of the anti-tank rifle regiments did not demonstrate the necessary backbone and did not manage to persuade battalion and regimental commanders to use the rifles correctly. Existing measures did not correct the state, divisional commanders were warned and the guilty are being investigated. There also further instructions included that underline the statement by Philip that you technically can carry the rifle alone, but practically two men were used. 
It is necessary to use the anti-tank rifles as follows. First, attach anti-tank rifle companies, free platoons to infantry regiments. It is reasonable to have a separate heavy weapons battalion at divisional level. Second, increase the crew of one rifle to five men. Two carry the rifle, two carry ammunition, one is for communication. Give them a card. Third, each anti-tank rifle platoon should have one handheld machine gun and two PPBDs for cover to destroy small enemy groups that seep through. Fourth, carefully pick the personnel, especially commanders. Equip them with necessary communications and control equipment. Company commanders should be issued a motorcycle. So thank you very much, Philip, for showing us the PTRS. And thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.